really warm welcome back to my channel, Pumpkin Becky. It's the 16th of March today and it is so hot here in the greenhouse that I've had to put a screen up because it's, it's just too much, you can't sit in here. Um, tomorrow, however, we're expecting snow, so the March madness continues. This week I'm doing some seed sowing. It's about time. If I do it much sooner then I find I'm overrun with seedlings, I can't keep up with the potting on, etc and I end up losing plants so there's absolutely no point in me personally starting any earlier than this. Now if you watched my garden tour video you will probably remember that I do something called square foot gardening. I have two purpose-built brick raised beds over in the kitchen garden area which is between the chicken run and the house. It means it's nice and accessible all the time and because it's raised beds they're so easy to maintain. I, if you at all can do something like that I would highly recommend it. I have tried growing in open ground and you're just constantly competing with grass and weeds and yeah it's much easier and you can control the sort of soil you've got as well. Square Foot Gardening is the brainchild of a gentleman called Mel Bartholomew and I have got his book here. This is the version for metrically minded people, <laughs> Square Metre Gardening. Mine looks a bit funky but that is because it lives in my potting shed. I like to have this book on hand. It is no use to me on a bookshelf on the other side of the house when I'm planting something and I think, ah, oh, how many of those? And I can't remember. Let's just quickly talk about the principles behind square foot gardening. Here you can see some diagrams and you've got beds which are broken up into feet square. So you've got three feet squares that way, three feet squares that way. And what these pictures are demonstrating is how many seeds or fully grown plants of something you should have in each square. So in that one, that particular crop will only be one plant per square, this one four plants or seeds, nine or even 16. So if we quickly look at this photograph here you can see that there are a variety of crops, a different one in each square and a different number of plants growing. Now that does a few things for us, it means we get more manageable harvests coming out of the vegetable patch, it makes it a very biodiverse ever-changing environment you can do companion planting you can have one set of runner beans that have been in for five weeks and are already well up the poles and you can have another square which is seeds just gone in so you have a constant rotation so that when one crop exhausts itself you have another one coming along you're never overwhelmed by the amount of vegetables or fruit coming out of a square or indeed the whole plot, depending on how many square feet plots you want to have, it all becomes very manageable. And if you only have five minutes to do a job, you can come out, quickly harvest what's in a square, pop in some extra compost just to reboost the soil, and then sow some more seeds. And all right, maybe that's maybe that's ten minutes by the time you've found everything done it all and finished off. I enjoy vegetable gardening anyway but I found when I had my allotment that actually it became a bit of a painful chore. Uh, I was fighting some pretty tough conditions at the allotment in terms of soil. Even though I was in raised beds um, I had difficulty getting things up to my plot so trying to import decent soil was backbreaking backbreaking. Um, I didn't have running water. The fact that I've got my, my little plots here right outside my kitchen door makes this so easy and achievable. I am going to share one little tip with you and it's actually quite a big tip. Grow things that you love to eat. It's very easy to get seduced by seed catalogues and oh, I need one of those, I need one of those and I need one. If you don't like eating them the chances are that they will just go to waste in, in the beds and that is a waste of time, effort, money, what's the point? You, you should grow things that you like to eat, maybe throw in a few different things that will um, expand your 
your taste horizons or a couple of experiments and remember you're only using a square foot of bed so you know it's not a huge amount of space that you're you're wasting but it is very easy to get suddenly a vast collection of seeds and I have one of these that you could never possibly sow in your lifetime they have a limited shelf life so again you're just wasting seeds if you're not actually planting them and then eating the produce look through seed catalogues go online go to the supermarket they've got seed packets go go to the garden center look at what they've got use your list as what it is that you want to eat but then look at the seed packets for what sort of flavors what size the plants are going to get when they're going to crop how often you're going to want to successionally so this information is usually on the back of the packet how frost hardy they are do you need to use a heated propagator to get them started very soon you will know exactly what is right for you and your area but those seed packets and the seed catalogues are an absolute mine of information so that's my little lecture over and done with and now on to some seed sowing so I keep my composts in open tubs. I tend to use quite a lot of them, go through them very quickly. So I find rather than faffing around with a bag, it's much easier to dump a whole bag into a, a lidded tub. It's labeled with what sort of compost it is. I also find them a darn sight easier to stack inside the potting shed as well, rather than bags which fall over. You really should sift seed compost. I don't, I'm a rebel. Uh, but I will sit and just crumble it through my fingers as I'm as I'm working with it um, to make sure there are no big lumps uh, because seeds struggle to push through that sort of thing, particularly very small seeds. Oh, look what I've just found! <laughs> A little baby ladybird in my greenhouse. How do I know she was a youngster? because the spotting on the shells was very pale. Um, when young ladybirds are born, they're born without any spots, and, and then gradually, as their shells are hardening in the sun, the spots will start to emerge. There you go, fun fact for the day. Let's have a look at what I'm gonna be planting today then. Now this is by no means a sponsored post. I just happened to have gone online to Sutton Seeds and picked up 11 packets of seeds that I particularly want to grow this season. I bought some Kelvin and Wonder peas, which are a really nice variety. I like those good long pods. The peas are really tasty. Broad beans, I have gone for Masterpiece Green Long Pod. Again, a really nice long pod. You get lots of broad beans per pod. Rainbow mix beetroot, just for fun. Uh, normally I would grow Bolt Hardy, uh, which is a, a really standard variety. Um, I thought, you know, I, this is something I will eat, but let's put a twist on it. I went for Carrot Early nan Nantes, Nantes, five. Perfect for this time of year. I got some chicory. This is Rosso di Treviso. I've gone for a mixed leaf salad because actually they're really nice, um, they're quick, you can cut really young leaves. Um, I have bought something called tomato pear drops. So they are a tiny plum variety, I love to eat those small sort of cherry plum tomatoes that you can buy, they're my absolute favourite, just pop them in like sweeties. Um, so to be able to have some salad leaves going and some nice unusual plum tomatoes. That's gonna mean I can just come out here on a Saturday lunchtime, pick a few things, chuck them in a bowl, and be eating lunch within a few minutes. This is a different leek variety to one I would normally grow. I usually grow something like mussel burr, um, autumn giant, something like that. Uh, this is Leon Prize Taker, just for a change some dill. Two different colours of pak choy. There is hanakan, which is the white one which you're probably used to seeing. And then here is ruby, which has beautiful purple leaves. 
parsnip gladiator. Now last year I actually bought plug plants of parsnips because my seed was so old. I have really rubbish germination. Absolutely dreadful. Uh, so I had to give up. I think I'd had two goes and I, it was too late. So I bought plug plants and goodness knows what variety were but they created the randomest shaped parsnips I've ever seen. Very difficult to uh, prepare in the kitchen. And I have also pulled some sweet pea seeds out of my seed box as well. Now lots of people say that some of these things can be planted direct but I have found from experience that actually my beds stay too cold and wet for too long and I would tend to lose these seeds to rot very quickly if I did that. I'm actually far better getting seeds going in modules and then plant them out once they're strong and healthy. So I'm going to start with my peas, Kelvin Wonder, and I'm going to start them off in this is a 5x3 size seed tray. I line my benches in the greenhouse with grow bag trays. They are literally marketed as grow bag trays, they are big enough to fit a grow bag in. So just evenly fill the seed tray. On the back of the packet you can see that there are all the growing instructions how to sow them. So because I tend to lose track of what I have sown where, I like to do the whole tray with whatever I'm going to do and then dip them in. Not quite pushing them right to the bottom, but they're pretty low. And then just come back in with another handful of compost just to fill the holes. And if I'm doing a bunch of sewing, what I like to do is just lay the packet on the surface for the moment, and that way I can come back and label the tray later. I don't have to worry about stopping and doing it now. Peas and broad beans, which I'm doing next, are four plants per square, which when you've got 15 modules that's a bit frustrating, but you won't get 100% germination, of course you can always sow some separate ones if you want to. Now I like to sow broad bean seeds much like I would do a pumpkin or a squash. So not flat because moisture can sit on the top and you can rot the seed either on its end or on its side or on its you know on the narrow faces and I actually have no idea which way the seedling comes out of this um, I always get it wrong the seeds will find their way upwards in the fullness of time so I just pinch the seed so so you could do this direct into the garden if your conditions will allow and you would be sowing if you're doing square foot gardening you would be sowing four per foot square what I will do is grow these seeds on in the greenhouse harden them off outside gradually and then plant four plants per foot square. This is a 40 square module and I'm going to use this for the carrots and the parsnips. They will quickly form their long taproot which is obviously the vegetable that you're going to be eating. Uh, so what you don't want to do is disturb that root too much. Um, all the books do say that you should technically sow these direct out into the soil, but again, I have my reasons for not doing it and I'm going to stick with them. So these are parsnip seeds, they're really rather beautiful, they're papery wings. Um, you can try and chip them in the dark, in a warm place if you want to, on damp kitchen roll. Uh, there are lots of different techniques for chitting, which means um, starting the seedling off 
first of all, getting that first little tiny bit of, of uh, shoot poking out of the seed casing. And I'm only going to sow half the tray with the parsnips and then do half the tray with the carrots. These, these are the carrot seeds. See, they are very, very small. They are smaller. So I'm going to have to rely on a kind of sprinkling action. But aim to just get one of our module. Next I'm going to take a tray that I got some plug plants in last year. It has drainage. So my cos lettuce. Now they say they should be ready to eat within three to four weeks, so that's good. And that's what a lettuce seed looks like. And I'm going to sprinkle those as finely as possible across the surface of this tray. So the last thing we're going to do is some sweet peas into four inch pots. This is Sutton's Spencer Special Mix Sweet Pea. You get 35 seeds in that packet. I'm going to do three per pot here. One, two, three. Lots of people would recommend trying to chit these, uh, soak them in water overnight, nick the seed coat with a knife. I don't do any of those things. I just let them do what they're going to do. When it comes time to planting them out, you can literally just knock the whole pot out into your hand and plant that straight into your final planting location. I haven't got to worry about thinning them or anything. So there we go, that's the first lot of seed sowing done for the year. That means the growing season is well and truly underway. Lots more to do, this is just the very, very beginning. <laughs> right, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to rate, share and subscribe to me here on YouTube. Don't forget to check out all my other social media in the down bar. And until next time, bye.